call this meeting, uh, the special meeting of council to order. Welcome our guests, administration, and the rest of council. With that, Mayor. Yes. Councilwoman Grove. Present. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilman Sheehy. Here. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. And Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. With that, we'll have the invocation of Chief Preston. Again, Father Lord, thank you for bringing us together another day. Thank you for thy many blessings. Guide this council and our, and our staff. Bless our troops, our first responders, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And with that, we have nothing else on the agenda other than to finish up the budget session. So we have Waterworks Capital Improvement. Um, we get our water tap-ins as fees as our revenue source, and we have a $5,000 capital expense in 2025 for an ending balance of $82,187. The next is the Cemetery Perpetual Care, and a portion of our cemetery lots goes into the perpetual care. We're estimating about 3000 this year, plus um, it gets interest from the bank account <coughs> for 11500 in interest. And we're usually around that $500, $600 arrangements for Flowers for Memorial Day. That's our expenditures out at the cemetery. And that account always has been <coughs> continuing to grow with an ending balance of $192,000 $592. Next is our street lighting. Our street lighting is our assessments for the um, residents for their square footage or road frontage. Road frontage. Road frontage. Hundred thousand dollars is committed as the revenue, and that just covers the cost. We do expect a little increase, but um, we did convert to some LEDs. I think was a question that uh, Councilwoman Wright had. So it's been actually maintaining it's a, a about a break-even account and we're in forty two thousand six hundred and sixteen dollars government center we started back in 2021 with a twenty five thousand dollar deposit transferred in from the general fund we um, are not spending anything out of that we're building the fund and we have hundred and twenty five thousand at the end of next year <clears throat> Wastewater equipment. Uh, Mrs. Oh, Harris, on the government center, is that like in a uh, savings account or a bond or something to where we're getting interest off of this money or not? Or is it, it is, just sitting there? It is not, but it is the money is part of what we get the interest for. The interest is going into the general fund <coughs> for that. Okay. As long as we get making money off of it, I mean. It's part of the total that we have in our investments. Just most of it goes back. We put a little bit in perpetual care, and the rest is um, general. general fund. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Wastewater equipment replacement fund, and that is the tap-in fees again. Um, $1,000 is revenue. We do have an equipment rehabilitation and capital expense this year, and our fund do, should be ending in $30,000, $240. That is the end of the budget. And on those water and wastewater capitals where it says tap-in fees coming in, with these new developments, that's where you're going to see each one of those pays a tap-in fee, and that's where those will go into for the future um, repair and replacement. So, so is this $8,000 that's <coughs> estimated 
for tap-in fees? Is that what we're thinking we're going to get from the new developments? No, um, the eight thousand. So each wastewater one is probably almost two thousand. Water is about two thousand. So we're just estimating four. They're they're thinking that by the end of twenty twenty five they could have you know eight to ten homes. We'll just have to make adjustment. We don't know. The first model hasn't even been built, so we just been going off history. Okay. All right. Thank you. Quick question on that. So then. <coughs> As those come in, does this balance get transferred to like a maintenance of some type? It, it just stays here in these funds for um, because they're coming on and we want to do part of the new well field. We want to do a new well. We want a, a big project because now they're going to put, let's call it strain on the system. Those tap and fees go in for a specific big project, not maintenance of a truck or anything like right. that. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, it, it goes specifically for something that is a improve the infrastructure. improvement yeah mm -hmm. for the, either the water or the wastewater yes. side or whatever okay yep so just when it reaches a certain level then it gets transferred to that um, the only other question I had the government center so we're saving money for the government center but we're still paying for one of our buildings correct correct 331 South Church, the finance department still has a mortgage on it, and I checked with the balance um, today, and as of this morning, our, our payoff would be $70,080. Our loan is through July 1st of 2030, and it's a 4% interest. Thirty. Thirty. Another five years on seventy-five grand. Yes. It's the current balance, interest rate, maturity date is zero seven zero one three zero. So when did we buy more, it? We have five more years. What year did we buy it? We leased for a long, long time. Yeah. I think we bought it about the time one oh one. I was. Um, yes, it was right year, before we bought it. Before the 101. Yeah, because 101 is paid for cash, I believe. That was bought with cash, yes. yes. And I don't think we had the other building when we bought 101. We had the, the one that we're talking yes, about, right. my finance building. We leased it for. We leased it, but I don't yes. think we bought it until after that. But we did turn that. it over to a loan um, and converted that lease over to our title. It's our okay. property. About when the was, time of 101. That was because the hospital wanted to get rid of that building. Correct. Right. Yeah. And now I thought that we bought that about a year before we <coughs> bought 101, mm. because that was before Ethan. I don't. I don't remember the. I remember do, us doing the 101, but I don't remember buying that building. I thought it was after. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's ours. Uh, <coughs> I don't have the original date. I can find out. It doesn't have like the it. number payment of whatever. Would, would it be possible to make two, two, uh, uh, pay half of that this year or in next year and pay half in, in 26 and get it paid off instead of running this for five years? And that just doesn't compute to me. If we have the funds to do that, let's get rid of it. Get rid of the loan, okay. not the building. <laughs> I got a question. What kind of money are we making on our investments or at the bank, et cetera? So at the last report, it was about 5.6 percent. Okay, so if we're getting 5.6 and it's only costing us 4 percent on this note, mm -hmm. then we would not be very smart in paying that off, would we? But we wouldn't be paying 4 percent. We'd be making 5.1 percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you're going to take your 5.1% to pay off. To pay off. I think it would be a fraction compared to the thousands that's in the, that we're drawing interest off of. And I'm not saying pay the whole thing off in one year. Just right, I understand. Pay, we pay like, okay. it'd be 75, well, we'd be 3250. Oh. But you're, you're getting 1.1% right. over and above your loan payment. Is there a way that you can keep an eye on the interest that we're earning, and if it drops to four or close, let us know, and then yeah. we could make a decision as yeah. far as yes, 
Yeah, and that that's included in my monthly finance reports. I'll have that um, listing of the, um, the interest rates. So yes, and it's probably trending, you know, to, to go Downward. down here soon. Yeah. yeah. Question. Go ahead, Kathy. If we move the police down there to that building, couldn't we bill them for the rest of that building? Or is that an effect still coming to us? Do you, do you understand my question? I didn't say it well. We pay everything for the police. We yeah, pay we, ab absolutely no. everything. Mm -hmm. There's no no money helping them at all, huh? Okay. No. They don't pay us a dime. That's great. Okay. Not unless you can trust or twist Chris's arm, or Chris Cook's arm. I don't know. He's a pretty big boy. <laughs> So yeah, we we pay for everything here for the deputies, but as you know, detective work, all those supplies. Yeah, we don't have to pay for that right. stuff. So at one point, uh, this is kind of for council, maybe <coughs> who remembers. Uh, there was some talk about giving our cruisers to the sheriff's office and letting them pay the maintenance and the gas and all that on it. At least in in. in Pardon me? A lease. Yeah, leasing instead yeah, of us lease, purchasing, we would just lease it back from them. From them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was cheaper in the long run, I think. If I remember correctly, it was cheaper per vehicle to lease it from them than to buy it and, and uh, supply it. It is when you replace your vehicles every less, probably less than eight years when they should be replaced. Um, sometimes we tend to hold on to a police cruiser a little long. But yeah, typically the lease is out because then. Um, the maintenance that we perform here is no longer done Ours. by us. So there's a couple things added on to it on top of that lease that helps save money. I mean, could, could we do that in the upcoming contract? There is. Um, one of the cruisers right now is leased, and then we have four in service. So as those expire, I don't think we put one in capital. That's why we didn't do it, is to when this uh, 2016 Explorer goes out, then we'll lease. And of course, we'll lease as much as they have cruisers too. Right. Once, if they end up starting to get some deputy positions filled and they're running out of cars, then it might be. So we might always have two or so, um, because I don't know that they'll always have five or six cars ready to lease, you know, at a moment's notice, I guess, or for us for a steady three, five years. Unless we have a commitment to say, you go purchase that car for your department, we'll lease it from you with a five-year guarantee or something like that, we'll have a deputy. You know, we're, we'll pay for a lease on a minimum. It'd be the only way I'd think they would be able to have enough cars in stock if they decide to keep, you know, trying to bring in their own deputies. Because I don't know what they have for reserve cars. I think the conversation was that they would provide the car at, um, I'm just going to say a figure because I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. And it, the car would cost us like 12, I'm going to say $12,000 a year for, to use one of their cars. Their deputy would bring it home. It wouldn't be ours. Right. Uh, and, and our cars, and I forget how they was going to acquire our cars, the our SUVs we have. Okay. And we would be out of the, out of the car business completely. That part I am unaware of. It, existing cars that the city owns, converting those to sheriff lease, that I do not know anything about. Okay. I could talk to uh, Ben, maybe here beforehand, and see if there was a previous conversation. I, I don't know that part. Okay. Good. I, I was thinking we had a conversation. Maybe I was thinking we had that conversation, and it wouldn't actually happen. It was a, the other type, the other conversation. Why don't we let uh, Howie kind of investigate that in his spare time? Yeah, I mean, he's not doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and see what he can come up with. And Anything else? Well, another, another thing I wanted to ask council, uh, I would like to see a, a uh, temporary police contract until to get us to like February or March, something like that, so we can renegotiate with the new sheriff instead of the outgoing sheriff, if that would be a possibility. 
And that may be a question that uh, Mr. Kitko would have to find out and get back to us. I can approach Mr. Hunt and see what they're what they're going to do. I mean, because I think they negotiated their uh, union agreement last year, so it should already be set for that part. Yeah. Um, so there shouldn't be too much of a difference unless there's other <coughs> charges. I haven't read the police contract um, in depth, so um, but I'll get a hold of him and just see what you know. The the current terms carry on through. Right. So it doesn't expire. However. You know that may be one way or if there's a way to do a temporary if that one expires and the new rates come in effect for the deputies January 1 you know if we have to make those up or they just put them in their temporary I don't know I'll, I'll have to talk to them okay. Okay. Yeah. you done well for now <laughs> Kathy you had something oh, it's Sorry. not about the police it was what I I forgot yesterday I was gonna ask about it the court we had talked about a safety winter window for the uh, cashier, mm -hmm. is that in our budget anywhere for her? Uh, it's already completed. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, nice to know. <laughs> yep, it just got completed day before yesterday. That's cool. Thank so you, you were going to tell us about it today, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm glad that, you that was number yeah. one thousand three hundred fifty-two yeah. on the list. <laughs> you have that many things to tell us? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Question, Miss Harris. Did we up council's, I don't want to say that, budget to increase a salary increase for the clerk? So the information that I had was adding a part-time clerk. So I did put some money in your budget. Let me get that pulled up. part-time or filling clerk per council for my notes from September 3rd and I put half of the salary that the clerk would I didn't have any rates or pricing so if there's a different number or if you think that um, will cover we did not do any council until you guys decide right. what that would be but I did put in a $2,400 for an annual amount so if you use the existing her rate can increase to that up to that amount without changing it or you would have another part-time what's council's pleasure do you think we need another part-time her, her workload has greatly increased since we went to these three meetings a month and now it's four five i go ahead you, do you think we need a, a part-time or can we just I, bump it up in there I would personally like to see a part-time person and the reason I say that let's say for some reason something would happen that Chris would not be able to complete her term or be with us if we had a part-time person that person could then fill right in if we don't, we're going to be out here in left field advertising again. I I would think that with what we've got going, we possibly would need that part-time person just in order to keep up with what's going on. And I'm open to whatever. Go ahead, Kathy. I was going to suggest a part-time person anyways to do our records. When I went over to the 101 building, our records were a, a big mess. I mean, it was pretty sad, really. And I, I would like to dedicate somebody. Maybe it could be the clerk's position, but I'm not sure she wants to do all that. So maybe we could use them as a dual-purpose person to you know do the records as a part-time thing just a certain amount of hours, you know, to do that. Um, I'd like for it to look a lot better. Maybe if she could scan them and get them all into files and stuff, because there's just a lot of papers. And I don't know how long you have the city have to keep them, 10 years, 15 years? I don't know how long. I'm um, talking our records, not our <laughs> records. Yeah, there's, there's everything from one year to perpetual um, mm -hmm. in there. And in the records room and the tax room, all the boxes are um, 
sealed up, organized by alphabetical and what their accounts payroll and payroll is done. Mm -hmm. Tax is in another room, all in a filing cabinet. So mm -hmm. the only thing that is not considered messy is uh, that they're not uh, digitized yet, right. which, which eventually would be nice to be digitized. So I'm kind of curious on what we have to work on for um, organization because we everything's labeled and... Well, that's what I was talking about, to get everything digitized. Okay, but, so digitized, not yeah. that we go in there and the boxes are all no, a mess. No, 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 no. Okay, no. okay. To get it all, I hate paper. I hate wasting trees. I, you know, I don't want to print it all up. I want it all digitized. And, you know, we can put them in a safety deposit box and then another, you know, make two copies and keep them. I just, I would like somebody to do that and it would take a lot less space. And if we hire them as a part-time service, they could work until I get it done, and then each January come back and then help digitize it. I don't, I don't know how it would work exactly, or who would be in charge of them or anything else. But I was thinking maybe it would share with with Chris's position, possibly. I'm, I'm not sure the clerk of council would, would, would be, be doing that position. I think that would be a, uh, a position, would be a city employee position. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if you if we would need a part time person to do that. Uh, you know, twenty five thirty hours a week. Uh, maybe April would want to do it. I heard she's got really good organizational skills. <laughs> <laughs> Does and is Sorry. very busy. We had, we had talked about and <clears throat> records retention is. Um, a very hard job. Mm -hmm. it's, it's probably one that a lot of entities never want to touch. And we can go back to having records from the old city building down by the water plant that were infested with water and they had mold and all that. Mm -hmm. When Before we tore down the sheriff's substation, we had about 400 banker boxes to box up to go through just to, to separate, because what your question was, yes, some stuff is, you can get rid of it immediately. Some stuff you have a year, right. it's payroll is 10. Yeah. But people from history would just put it all in a box. Here's my 2024 records. So your tax administrator and myself, before that building went down, hand did for three months, just boxing and logging for destruction, we were able to shred the 300 and some boxes. The rest went to 101. Good. So now we've set up this annual shredding that comes in and we have them in boxes as to destruction dates based on when they can go in a record. And it all has to go to historical sites. It's a really big project. Mm -hmm. But the last time that Mr. Bridge and I had talked about digitizing, so we're right there with you, mm -hmm. I think he had a quote that was over $60,000. To come in and that wasn't for all of it right. but the concern with the legislation and the books we have three or two sets of fireproof safes uh, filing cabinets in our building and we're trying to put the legislation in there because what we brought down from the from the substation was really really old records and they're permanent they're your resolutions and your ordinances dating back in you know early early time right. so trying to preserve those those are going to be hard to do we talked about trying to get an intern from right state that could do them take them mm -hmm. off site the closest we got was the gentleman who came in for your um we we the day that we did the community um cleanup sure we had the the meeting here with the council I, I lost the word of what we were doing. The retreat. The yeah. retreat thing. Peter Bales. So Peter had given a quote, and he did some sets of records for um, the city manager and some of the planning. Um, so he came in and he had that service. So that was eleven thousand. So we got that caught up. So it's it's time consuming. Yes, it needs done. Yes, um, maybe getting new quotes to see. Would well, Go ahead. Yeah, well, that's why I was thinking, you know, I, I know I've talked to Randy about this and how much it costs and all that. And we need to do it ourselves. I mean, I used to work with a microfish, and I know we could do that. It's a, You buy the machine. It's super simple to do this. Is so old. And it's old now. I'm just saying that you could also scan. I went through and scanned all of our documents and put them on the computer. So, I mean, scanning's easy to do, and they have the little bar scanner. Just, it's pretty fast. So I'm thinking we could use our person 
And yeah, you'd have to teach her, and yeah, it'd be kind of a, or him, it'd be a pain, I know, but in-house we could do it cheaper and and at a pace to just and a slower pace so just steady pace and get somebody else a, a nice little job here in town that serves us and them so that's what I was thinking I, I know we don't have the money to send it out that's it's okay I don't know I just would like to lay aside some money for that part-time position and it's important we need a bright person to not screw shit up <laughs> sorry bad word you want to add an employee? I right would like now? to if council wants or to. Part time, full time? You said no, part time. part time. And if they just can't do it, maybe you and the other lady will have to help. But, I mean, hopefully they would get to be able to do it and then maybe just do it the first three or four months of the year. It'd be a great job for a parent, you know, a kid, school kid parent. You know. Would we want to go out and get a price for? digitizing for a company to come in and to do that versus an in-house situation it's worth checking so we have some numbers to decide yeah, we can look we can look both ways because honestly if we get someone you're going to need someone that uh, will not make mistakes when they're doing the scanning mm -hmm. your legislation and ordinance we keep those obviously hard copy those got to be that way we do have a scan version uh, in case of fire we have a third version of it but those other ones that are in the boxes um, you know, if we did get someone six months and that's their 30 hours a week, that's all they're doing, that might be something we could look into, mm -hmm. get the right person and say, hey, you know, is, is, or when we get these quotes, fish for that information on, how long is it, how do you think, how long do you think it take to do 100 banker boxes of scanning? And if they kind of give an estimate, it's gonna take you about six, eight months to do that, or they'll bring in their, they bring in a team, right. you know, that type of thing. So we'll look into various ways that it, it probably could be handled. Um, but what she's talking about at the old thing, that whole building over here at the firehouse here was full of records. And now we're down to about a one, well, less one room and a, a few pieces on the inside. So we've probably dropped it down 75%. Yeah, 75, 80%. We, so we're only down about 20, 25% records. So in taking what you have said, we've got about $1,400 added into the council budget to pay for either a part-time and or um, so we have 2400 I took half the salary so the clerk is at $400 a month so that would either be a part-time clerk from the notes I had adding one a month uh, here and there or um, adding to the salary of the one you're here so that's in there it can go up or down so there is options to add her, you know, raise her wage and maybe look at a, an additional, if we can find someone. I don't know who's out there eager to part-time clerk. I don't know what you guys' is, um, last interview schedule went, you know, went, like, went like, so. We had some really good options, so, yeah. We chose the best. Well, I think <laughs> sooner or later we're going to have to digitize these documents and we either are going to bite the bullet now or it's going to get worse as each and every year goes on. Would that be council but line item or just general? Go ahead. We, so. we did the, the general. <coughs> I did it in my budget actually. The, the clerk wouldn't, our clerk, clerk wouldn't be the one doing this no, scan. She It'd would be not. a city employee. Cor yeah. So that we're talking two different things. Right. Are we going to uh, try to put into the budget to get a part time person to do the scanning? is one side of it and the other side is it are we going to raise our clerk's salary per month right well, now she gets to paid the same as council does right so that brings another question if we're going to raise the clerk's pay are we going to raise council's pay by the same amount so it's like a you know you start on top of the hill and you wind up down at the bottom of a big snowball i agree with you uh, the only thing I will say, I did not come on this job to, I guess the word is make a second income. It was to do what I could do for the city. And I assume, and I shouldn't do that, that most of the people that are here are basically for that. To me, I recognize what Chris has got. I, I know what 
Emily had done, and I know what Jean had done. And when Jean mentioned about coming back, there was no way he was going to come back for $400. I firmly believe we, yes, as long as we maintain these work sessions and try and work through the situation, we definitely need to pay Chris more money. Then if you want to hire a part-time person, be it help Chris, be it digitized, whatever. I could care less, but we need to. I guess we're just put ourselves in a position that we're looking ahead. Go ahead. Is it possible to raise Chris's pay and if if she's out sick, then give somebody else who steps in to pay for that day. Would that be possible? I think you talked about that also in another session. So it's a monthly fee um, if she gets sick and nobody replaced or I think Randy was doing a lot of the fill and um, she would still get her salary. But we can change that if you want it as a pay per council meeting. But we let's check with Jake and legislation. I don't know if that's, you know, how that's done. But yeah, it's your pleasure. Um, we have right now, we could increase her that extra 2400 which would put her at $600 a month, starting January 1, when this budget goes in. And then if you want to, again, look for another part-time, we just have to increase the budget. Um, we can talk about that before it's done. But that's what I have right now, and we can raise it. Let me ask Chris. What's your take on this? How much more money is it going to take to keep you happy? Um, Six point two million. One million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm putting you on the spot. I mean, I guess I don't want to put a number on it necessarily, but depending on how many meetings you have, like this month, I think you had eight or nine meetings scheduled. That's yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a lot more meetings than <laughs> yeah. when I first took the job. It was three. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, that's that's, true. that's a lot more, and it's not just sitting in here for the two to three hour meetings it's after that going home and typing up notes and doing legal ads and mm -hmm. whatever else you could probably make more money at mcdonald's at three hours probably. in the <laughs> evening but you know i am willing to pay in my mind what it takes in order to keep you happy mm -hmm. number one i don't want to go out and get another clerk mm -hmm. if we have to we have to but, but <clears throat> you know i'll i'll yield to whatever the rest of the group wants to do go ahead Kathy my suggestion would be to get our other clerk or our substitute clerk is what I just want to call them and you're expecting to do three a month and that's good you know most of the time that is all we do we don't sometimes do but if that other person could take over all the additional from the three like this month we'd have had her half the time and Chris the other half of the time and we would pay her the hundred dollars a a night or whatever it figures out to be do the math you divide it by three yeah you know, something like that you would still not go below the what you I think that might be the most just I've not done it for very long but right when you come to every meeting it makes it easier versus right two people just hit consistency going to yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's just from the couple months that I've been doing it so far right but yeah th this time of year is hard on all of us because we're all doing all those meetings and mm -hmm. it does and it's not just the time we're here either we're working right. from home too so my opinion is i think we should just give her the twenty four hundred dollars added to her salary and be done with it yeah she's doing a great job she's a hard worker she's dedicated she just told us she showed up mm -hmm. she's never late she don't complain. She stuck her hand up not knowing what she was getting into. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, is everybody else good with that or what do you want to do here? I personally, and I, it sounds bad, I do not want our clerk to make more than us. I'm sorry. To me, that I'm, doesn't sound right. If she's doing more work than I am, I she's have no problem. She's not doing more than me, though. So, sorry. You know, and I don't have any idea of what she's doing at home, um, getting the minutes in order, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't know what.
Chris, have you got an idea of how much time you're spending? Um, I calculated up just meetings alone for just the month of October. I mean, most of the meetings were almost three hours. So then when I go home, then I have to type all these up and do the legal ads for them. So I don't know how long it takes to type up every meeting. So basically, you know, you've got three hours per meeting, and then basically what are you doing at home as far as the typing of the minutes, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, so I get the agenda, and then on the meeting, the second meeting of the month, and I have to do snapshots of everything from the packet to put in there and then type the comments that go along with it that everybody has said. I usually go back and watch the video to make sure there was nothing else that was missed through that. So that's, even if you fast forward, it's a three-hour video, so you're jumping ahead. And then the legal ad after every regular session meeting, at least. Would you say you're putting in an average of uh, two hours every evening after you after every meeting? Mm -hmm. So basically, instead of three hours, you're doing five. Mm -hmm. So if we were to have three meetings a month, that's 15 hours. That's what, about $9 an hour? Chris, do you feel that you need a raise? Do you, do you feel that you would like one? Well, no. I mean, I think it's a lot more work than... Than what you chewed on. Mm -hmm. And maybe this month is a bad month, but it, there was quite a few meetings. Well, between now and Christmas, mm -hmm. yes, you're you're going to be inundated. Uh, I don't know whether we're going to approach that CIP. Uh, I know we're talking about that TIF arrangement. Um, you're talking about the comprehensive plan. Um, there's a lot of things between now and the first of the year. <coughs> but, but then it should slack off. Uh, After that, In yes. January, we should be back uh, two meetings a, a month and maybe one work session. Mr. Mayor. What's your thought? Okay, go ahead. Could Chris. I make a motion for that? I make a motion to increase uh, clerk of council's pay. $2,400. Is that a month? Mm -hmm. No. A year annual. Yeah. I'd, I'd do the clerk of council. Then, if that was the case. Well, you, you didn't clarify. <laughs> it might actually just start. Start. It's details. Yeah. I mean, no, we need breathing, okay. <laughs> Are we voting on there? <clears throat> do I have a second? Sorry. I have a second in the vice mayor. Okay, so motion to increase clerk's pay to $2,400 a year. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Grove. Yes. Councilman Bond. I'll abstain. I'm okay. lo loosely related to you. No. Oh. Councilman Chami. Yes. No. Oh. Councilman Wright. <laughs> yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Avis. Yes. Six zero one accepted. For clarification, is that for January one, or when the legislature is? Uh, January 1. January 1. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Good. January 1. Can you hang in there? January 1. <laughs> um, anybody got anything else on the budget? If not, I would like to... When you guys are done, I have some stuff oh, okay. from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see a, a line item put in this budget for grants, and I'd like to see about $10,000 put in that for the possibility of entertaining the thought of hiring an outside grant administrator or a grant, I won't call it a searcher, but that would be it. I know, Howie, you've done a lot of grant work. I'm sure the chief has had a lot of people do some grant work. But I think there's more grants out there that we can be getting. And I know one of the fellows was talking about an hourly rate. One of them was talking about approximately $1,500 a grant if he wrote a grant. Mm -hmm. So my thinking is if we've got a line item in there that 
possibly we might entertain the thought of additional grants. Um, what we could do is we have a line item for professional services in almost every area. So, you know, if we bumped up maybe the general and all of a sudden he said, hey, I found one on top of water that Howie never got, then we could maybe just do it out of that. But we can up bump a general uh, professional services, um, say by maybe 10,000, and just note there that if we decide to find someone, that we don't have to add a line item for it because that's where we do Okay. various things that for paying various companies and I have no problem with that I, I think it's a I don't want to say this I realize your time is important and it's you're overworked at some point you know and I I honestly don't think the council's got any quote unquote expertise in the grant field so I think if we get somebody that's got some expertise, so be it. Is that all right with everybody? Do you, you, do you need a motion on that? I think if there's a general consensus um, that nobody's really speaking, I don't think I don't think we need a motion for that. Okay. Um, I'm not the attorney, but <laughs> I don't think. Well, I think I think that. We can bump that. It was at I think one. Is that one thirty? It's hard to read from here. I just put it in. It was oh, you just put it in. Okay. I'll say I, I thought, didn't think it was one thirty yet. <laughs> uh, I have something else I'd like to bring up to council. At one time, I had spoken with Mr. Bridge about, and I forget what we was, what we had kicked around calling it. But the idea behind of it is, is to put some money, to set some money aside to help it'd be like loaning it out to the to low income families to improve their properties, do maintenance on their properties that doesn't have the money to afford it. Kettering has a program, and again, I forget what they call it. Uh, in some cases, we don't get the money back. In some cases, it's a loan. We get it back if they can afford to pay it back. It's all based off of their income and what projects they want to do. Everything has to be approved through the administration. Uh, and when him and I talked about it, I thought it was a good idea. And, and we had discussed, if possible, and Mrs. Harris would have to even tell me if we can do it. Uh, uh, setting aside 50,000 max uh, for that program to to help people uh, and I, it was something to do with the poverty rate I, I wasn't, wasn't it the Kettering beautification or, uh, no, I think it was something along that line something like that but it was for the homeowners that didn't have the money to to fix the outside of their property up like you know, if they needed gutters or something like that, they could borrow the money from us. And if they could pay it back, great. If they couldn't, they didn't have to. After a certain amount of time, we'd forgive it. Uh, so I would like to see something like that if council would be interested in it. But from the look I'm getting from <laughs> Mrs. Harris, uh, <laughs> maybe I just stopped talking. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay, didn't they have to qualify though? They do have certain? to qualify, it, and it's a, it goes off of the uh, federal guidelines for the pov poverty level. So it depends on how many people's in the household, how much income. <laughs> there, there's a kind of a lot to it, from my recollection. So they may have their own CDBG, um, which we get ours administered through the county on some items like that. They also have the chip program. So the county and New Carlisle going together to get chip, which is. Com community housing improvement plan and we've had plenty of uh, people on I think there was a couple on Trey Gail Wood a few go in there they qualify and then they may get siding get an all-new roof a new air conditioning unit things like that what yeah, you're talking like about that, yeah All right, if I can find out if the chip is still I can get with Brian because now Brian works with Dirk over to county to to keep the chip applications going and see if there's if it's just low income if it's seniors and low income and then if there's something on top of that you uh, that they can't quite cover 
um, because we want to administer it here locally and maybe just pitch in with the chip program mm -hmm. I could look into that just to make sure you know what time do we have in that qualification process the application um, stuff the legal the um, if it there is a, an assessment you know the the legal uh, repayment terms you know typically chip is almost all 100% grant I believe uh, there's mm -hmm. no loan yeah. uh, and that's all federal money of, uh, of course coming down <clears throat> um, so I can look into that and see are we getting people with chip and I can say hey we're getting we got 20 houses that got repaired with chip money last year and if that's sufficient to counsel great if you're going we'd like to get a couple more then that may be something where we don't have to put as much in mm -hmm. maybe you know a, a roof on a small house might be five six thousand dollars we might be able to do a couple roofs in the in the town or something like that <coughs> I think, to me, yeah. that sounds like a good method of looking toward where we're going with right. that. I mean, it, it's a way for the city to give back to the... Taxpayer. Pardon me? Taxpayer, yes. Because mm -hmm. I was trying to think of a good word. Uh, so to give back to the, the taxpayers, you know, that, that are struggling or <clears throat> has repairs that we, as a city, keep digging them on. And they don't have the money to fix it, you know, uh, you to, 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 to get money. the repairs done. I think it would be an awesome way to, for the council and the city to give back to the to the people. Would a possible good start? We could. I mean, it's they typically neighborhood revitalization. Um, though there's something like that. Yeah. Um, we'll look into that. We could at least get a line item, and then if you're looking and say, hey, we just need some starter money. So if we did. Uh, an adjustment to the budget with a supplemental down the road we can go hey we already have the line item we have it approved in the budget if we decide to move forward is that something we would do or if it's council's wishes we could yeah. put a line item put a little in there mm -hmm. to hold okay. it seed so put a little seed in there and then build it later if we go hey we're getting good reception to this we're able to match you some of that money to match with other money you know okay. so when you say seed money you think in 15 20 grand I would say uh, I was thinking ten just to start, and then You're a small thinking, Howie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a start. So yeah. if, if council thinks that's a good idea, uh, I my colleague here next to me has something she'd like to say about it. <laughs> I think for me, I would like to focus it on the things that we do ding people on, and also medical conditions. So, like if you need an air conditioner, that's usually a medical thing for some people. I would love to provide that. If you need a roof, I'd love to provide that. You know, if you need a new mower, I'd love to provide that. But if you want to like finish the interior of your house and get a no, new it's, kitchen, it's nothing. nothing like that. No. Just things that the the city would be on their butts about, and then it might help them medically. You know, in their life. You know, we can help with got, that. We got enough information here mm -hmm. to let Howie and and Miss Harris. Uh, investigate this but I think I think we're all in agreement that to start this kind of a program I don't have a problem with it. well I was going to mention one more thing because Colleen and I spoke about the water bill and it was called a roundup program where people would donate the last few cents of their water bill if they chose and I thought that was a brilliant idea I mean I know I would because you know it's 43 cents or something like that you know and that would go maybe to this fund and then if they were somebody that needed help with a water bill not a regular offender not a you know but somebody that needed help maybe that water bill could also be in the help category is that going to be an accounting nightmare so I, I have some um, history with the roundup program we developed it a few years back and it's all voluntary so anybody that gets a water bill choose it to round up every every bill. The most they'll pay is 99 cents or it might be one penny. However, it goes into a separate fund for the auditors and we don't control it, we monitor it. So there is a special panel then that will come in and decide who gets to use from it. And my history was it was to keep the people from the shutoffs. They could come in and apply for, I'm, I need help this month. And there's X amount in the fund, you're allowed to have a couple hundred dollars and, and you've got your your credit for that month and then something for others. We tend to get donations into that too, but it did take like two years to build because you're, you're only getting pennies mm -hmm. from a few people. But it was a really nice program for um, donations from the users 
for the citizens. So that's the experience I have with Could the two possibly be tied together, or is that not going to be doable? I think you'd have to get um, some more supplemental money in it because it did take a while. Right, before. but could we seed it with the 10000 and then start and then start and then have a separate like i said right panel kind of decide and then campaign to get it going and yeah. all that good stuff and that's that's how it worked it worked real well april you had something you wanted to add a while ago and i <coughs> skipped over you I don't <laughs> it was about the quirk oh i was just going to mention that she and i communicate a lot just to get information back and forth pertains to my job and her job and it's during the day and she's at her normal job so I was just going to say she really does go above and beyond. Well I have no doubts about that and you know my concern is to get her paid I don't want to say this for what she's doing mm -hmm. and for what she's bringing forth to council I think yes we need to increase your pay, and I think we've already done that. So you know, that's where we're at. Um, go ahead, Mr. Bond. I the only thing I'll say about these programs like this, I agree. I like the idea and the heart behind them, as long as it doesn't become an administrative nightmare where it's like, okay, we have this program. Now we have to hire somebody to administer no, this program, I don't do that. and now it, you know, it, or, or it becomes more of a burden. So that'll be where you guys will need to say, "Hey, sure, this is a good thing, but it's costing us twenty hours a week of somebody trying right. to keep up with this." And, and well, so it's a, it's a. Um, we have one not, second. Not, you can have it. Not sure. real cost effective or whatever. So um, would would it be beneficial? And I'm thinking outside the box again to have, let's say, one or two of council, maybe an administrative, somebody on a committee to field these applications. And if that were the case, then you could pass it on back to Brian. Yeah, let me get, let me get with Brian on how he would field that. And let me talk with Dirk. Dirk okay. administers the Dirk whole county. good. He does the whole county for the, their countywide program and I'll see what he gets invested on let's say instead of having you know what what's the county um, you know 60 60,000 people say hey if we only had you know 6,000 people and we're trying to do maybe you know we got 10 applications what would it take to do that I, I can get with him on that I can oversee that if you like I concur with that if you are hmm? I can help you with that give you some help with I actually had this on one on my list of things that I wanted to see if council was up to for when I when I got on council. This is one of the things I wanted to do, um, and I had an idea of, and I think people will do it, uh, getting like a a board together, like a committee of volunteers to actually help people in the neighborhood. And we can switch them out. We have a lot of contractors here. We have a lot of people with big hearts that love to help people. And I really think people would get behind it. So that's just that I was just wanting to throw that idea out there because mm -hmm. that was one of my ideas that I wanted to put forth in 2025. I didn't think about putting it towards the budget, though. Is that something more for a, a, like a local nonprofit to head rather than the city to do that to organize the groups? Like we right. we had went out and um, got we talked to a property owner and. The story was in the news. You know, we we saw some stuff that is not usually uh, correct. So then Brian and I come back and talked again. And before we did any kind of abatement, um, we started talking to Dirk, local contractors, about some things that they were having issues with. Next, you know, a company come in, they got a group together, and did exactly what you're talking about. Um, but it was based on what we found on um, some issues. The issues was a resale wasn't completely done right and found mold and things like that. So, uh, but the community came together and did that. It wasn't a city thing, but we we found it by uh, going to abate someone. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's a some contact or something like that, you know, if there's a, a a nonprofit, I know a few people around it have some nonprofits that might be able to do that. On top of where we say, hey, if you guys are doing all this, we might be able to assist them 
while you're rebuilding, while you're doing this with their water bill or with uh, if you need a little extra money to finish off that roof or something, that might be where you're right. coming in to do that. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like the city can help a little bit mm -hmm. financially, but there could be a group of volunteers doing the work so that, you know, to take that financial burden off the city, but also have people within the city give back to their own community mm -hmm. in a really special, heartfelt way. You know, I was really thinking about that with a lot of the elderly people here that can't get their yards done. Like, they just have a hard time getting out there. I know, like, my dad has a hard time mowing the grass sometimes, and they had to have some, pay somebody to do it, but a lot of people in our community can't afford that. Oh, hey, let me ask a dumb question. That group that <coughs> Randy was thinking about with that TIF stuff that was going to oversee those TIF funds, would that not be possible to funnel <laughs> all of this through that? I don't know on TIFs if you can do this type of work. Okay. I don't know if maybe the NCAs are a possibility. Those, um, those I'm in a crash course right now trying to figure this these TIFs out. Um, I got a call, trying to call tomorrow or the next day with the attorney who's helping us with the TIFs. I got to do a lot of catch up so I can, add, you know, try to ask some questions um, with those, with the two developments and things like that. No problem. I was just thinking that, you know, that would eliminate one extra committee if we could marry up some of those. Yeah, if you had, I, yeah, I don't know how an NCA committee or would that group would handle this or once the tiffs in it's yeah i think it's under the city's jurisdiction on how it, how it you know where it goes and how it's done so yeah i got i got a lot to learn on that so well and that boy from columbus is going to be able to yeah guide you yeah anything else guys i have one more thing uh good the uh I was speaking to Mr. Kitko earlier today about the, we had talked about the, having the volume on the cameras turned off, mm. the sound. So when you're walking down the street, nobody can hear private conversations with the exception of the front counter at the city building and the uh, court chambers. And when I asked him if that had been done, if he knew if that had been done, he said some of it he thought was done, and correct me if I don't get the wording right, but he also told me that the way the motion was made wasn't clear to them what we wanted. So I would like to clarify that motion with a new motion, and the new motion is to direct the interim city manager let me correction direct the manager and or the interim city manager to as soon as possible hopefully this week to have all volumes turned off on all cameras with the exception of the front desk uh front counter whatever they call it cashier's, cashier's window mm -hmm. and the court is that clear Yes. <laughs> second. second. Yeah. I have a okay. motion and a second. Does anybody have? Go ahead, Mr. Chair. Oh no, no. I was <coughs> pointing down that. Right. That's, that's right. Anybody have anything else to say on that motion? Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. No. Councilman Grow. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cheney? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Six to one accepted. Duly noted. Um, do you want me to go in with a few other items that I had for go the budget? Ahead. Yes. Um, so I did look up, uh, had one of my guys for the monthly chimper rental and a weekly. So weekly is 1050 And it um, that was just going through one company. You know, there's only a couple really that you get from. And then f about $4,100 per month. And then 
for instance, this one company we used to do tub grinding. It is no longer a service. They do it in bulk grappling. So they'll bring a, about a 40-yard truck and grapple it in there. Yeah, about 500 a load. So we we get in in a month, we'll have about eight of our smaller truck loads. So we'd probably be somewhere around at minimum probably five hundred dollars a month in residential. I didn't realize we pulled this much brush monthly. Um, so yeah, we get about four or four, five to eight F five fifty dump trucks. So that's a two to three yard each, and we we can get seven or eight of them in brush. Did we have a tick for the hur little bit of hurricane winds that came through? We did, but I guess brush is a huge monthly service for us. Are we at a level where, I know some other municipalities have a like dump site and then they you know, have it ground and it's there as mulch for the local people to mm -hmm. come in and then get the mulch out of there to use in their yards or whatever. Are we, are we at a level where we need to start thinking that direction um, if, because if, of the amount that we're... That's something that I'd have to do the calculation, try to say, okay, you know, we're getting 40 yards of loose brush. That's going to end up being on a, it, maybe five yards. Yeah, there's of, a lot of air in there. So yeah. yeah. So trying to figure out how much we, we do with that. And if they don't tub, I don't know. I haven't looked elsewhere. Typically, your regular tree companies do not tub. Um, so you got to go get a big company to do it. And, and I think what they're finding out is when they used to bring it on site, that was costly. Now it's easier for them to leave that big machine in the center of their field and haul, everything. haul, haul it over and, and put it in there. Um, so I wanted to definitely get you those chipper rentals. What I was talking with the superintendent today is, let's say we, you know, I was talking about those 12 trees we have in the old section of town we want to do them, and we rent that for a month. You know, hopefully we get into a month that we have good weather. Because um, if we get a week or two weeks of rainy weather and then we're pushing ourselves, um, you know, we do well at tree work, but we don't do it every, every day. Mm -hmm. It takes us a little longer. Sure. So there could be times, you know, we might rent it a couple times a year uh, if we get into that. Um, monthly brush pickup is where I told him, this is something that I think about is because we don't have a lot of storage. Even we really didn't, even with Madison. We probably shouldn't have been piling, you know, brush up out there. That's just not the place to do it. It's out in the site or out in public view. Um, so we really don't have a place where we can go store this and then, yeah, bring someone in or have it bulk grappled. Because the price per truck does go down um, a little bit to maybe 350 if he knows he's coming in doing a five truck loads, 10 truck loads in a day. Okay. So in, in one of the, in, I had looked up a couple different uh, chippers. Basically, um, the one I saw that was probably the lowest that I would even remotely consider, it's like our Gravely, it was a Honda chipper for, um, well, it was originally going for 11 grand. It was on sale for nine, and it was uh, a little, I think it was a little four-cylinder gas. Uh, it was uh, just like the one we got now. When I was talking to my superintendent today, we've rebuilt it twice. But we never got a new one just because we left community, we used to do community cleanup for brush. That's when we would blow it up. It just won't handle that yeah, type of production. Not, yeah. What, uh, Mr. Kicker, what size limbs will the one for 9,000 that you were just talking about? What size, up to what size okay. limbs? Okay, it two says inches? it'll do seven inch, but I'm, oh, I'm gonna. That's a big tree. <laughs> yes, um, the one we got is a four inch max, and, and it's just not. It, I don't, you know, um, if, if you were gonna put one seven inch limb through it, you might get lucky if it's five feet long. Um, we typically <laughs> don't grind that. We're cutting that, and then various citizens, which, you were talking about, I know someone who picks up some of our cut wood and takes it to a needy family, which is open to all citizens. It's just our wood we bring back. We just don't toss it into the woods. And um, so, yeah, there is a need for a, a chipper. I'm trying to figure out for rentals a good thing on that. Our monthly brush pickup is where we struggle for storage space until we tub it out or haul it out. But we can't haul it out. It's just inefficient. So... Back to, on the chipper, you're telling us you can get a new one for nine thousand with a four with a four cylinder engine on it that will take up to a seven inch limb. Which if you put anything more than four inches in it, you're probably pushing it. But with a four cylinder engine, it would probably chew it up pretty good. Is that what I'm um, hearing? It's not like it's not like four cylinder car engine. It's smaller. Um, 
I forget what the name like of the a website is. Engine? Huh? Like a lawnmower engine? Like a technology In between. It, it's in between. Um, I don't know if I still got this up. Because typically what all cities get are Vermeers. Your, your Vermeer is going to last you. Replaceable knives. Um, pillow block bearings. Those things, when you go out, you're not burning it up on a job site. Um, that's, the, that's the key with uh, commercial chipping. Let me see what it was here. And, and while you're thinking about that. A 22 horsepower. So, yeah, lawnmower oh, engine. Okay. Uh, hmm. Did you by any chance oh, yeah, get a quote well, from, uh, I think it's Vandalia Rental over here in Vandalia? Because they have Vermeer. Now, yeah, I, I, ju I just don't list the company names of the places okay. I get quotes from when I'm doing that. So then, you know, they start getting competitive. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, there's there's only two or three companies yeah. that really rent commercial chippers, Vermeers, and we checked. Okay. Do so you think the nine thousand dollar one would work? Because if we rent it, we're going to have twice. If we do it twice a year, we're going to have almost nine grand just renting one for. I would. I wouldn't buy this for my monthly <laughs> uh, brush okay. pickup. If I should, it's. It's not welded steel chute. It's a formed uh, steel. Oh, that, um, just, that wouldn't last long enough to throw a tree limb through it. Yeah. Um, even your fly-by-night tree companies don't get these. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're using some older Vermeers. Um, I didn't get a chance to get that in-depth with it from what I was looking at at state contract last year. But like I said, I think what we have, 50000 total? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, well, I think I told you when the supply chain had issues, it started at thirty-two thousand and ended up forty-two or forty-six. I can't remember what I said yesterday, um, but that was right in that eleven hundred series thousand eleven hundred XL Vermeer, which is pretty much it's your machine for a long, long time. So that's that's what I found out so far. And how long would that last if we bought a new one? And that's what you said, fifty thousand or thereabouts. It, it's going to be less than fifty. Um, they got a couple different models out there, but it ranges anywhere from thirty-five to fifty. How many years would we get out of it? Well, 10? let's put let's put it this way: the one we got now is, is um, well now because we baby it real bad. Um, has been around. Tw it was here before I got here, so it's over twenty-five years old. And these machines. Um, they're, they got so many replaceable <coughs> parts on them. You know, it's not a throwaway. I mean, it'll be here well past. You? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah, it, it's. I'm going to throw us in the chipper. That's one way to put it. <laughs> what does council think about, and we have that in the line item, line item already, correct? Mm hmm And we have 50 grand sitting there for it? That's max, yes. It's thirty thousand in each one, but it's okay. to come yeah. in under that. There's yeah. it's the, split between parks and streets. I guess my question to council is how hard set are you on not buying it versus buying it? And if it's gonna last twenty years, uh, I think it would be a better investment in some of the other things we bought, like backhoes and trucks and dump trucks and we we do good with our equipment. I know you do. I know you take you, you, you yeah. do. We do well with our equipment, and we've got a lot newer equipment than we did seven years ago, or five years ago. Mm -hmm. So we've updated the fleets. Uh, we've updated a lot of the equipment. Uh, if we need it, if we need it, right? We need it, but do we do we need it, Howie? You tell us. No, I I, th I think we need it, and I, like I said, I talked to the superintendent. And it it makes life easy. And you I mean, it's time it. consuming going out and hauling trucks worth of brush. And you, then you could use it right on site instead of hauling it. You throw it through the chipper and haul it back <coughs> and dump it. That's it. Yeah, we make so we make if we're doing eight trips that day to various places in the city. That's that truck going out at one site, loading up. We might get a second resident on there, come back, dump it out, go back and go. Well, that one truck, we have a chipper box for our dump truck. Mm -hmm. It's probably one time through and we're back. That's usually... With the chipper. Yeah, with the chipper. You're, you're probably in one trip. 
And you do that, what, three times a year? Oh, Four times one, a year? Once, once a month. Week? Once a month from April through November. Once a month. Yep. And so why don't you take the chipper out to the houses then? Because I've never seen a chipper at my house. We They always claw it and put it in the truck. It's, uh, Jer, my, our mechanic, has just been trying to keep it together. So we're hesitant in going out and then blowing it up right there and then having oil everywhere. So rarely are we using it now. It's it's in the... I, think, I, think I understand make that, oh, but the six thousand dollar ones that are six inch chippers, mm -hmm. which are Everything. not industrial, but they're commercial chippers, no. that could go with our dump truck and go from house to house and easily pick up the little bunches and shred them as you go. But that's it doesn't the have to be the monster machine. Well, that's the problem is our bunches are fifteen minutes of uh, chipping. So they're not just your hand little things that we're getting. We're 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 taking a, a good significant. We're, right. We don't oh. take tree removal. Right. But boy, we're getting close to uh, <laughs> you know a good a good topping on a tree. And I, I have looked at this, and obviously I've been a mechanic for 30 years plus. Mm -hmm. I have worked on equipment. I and, and you name it. Um, when it comes to commercial versus residential, what what I think you know stays together because it's not the same person using it every time. Mm -hmm. um, this person may throttle it up faster than ever. It with, with, withstands various people using it the various ways. Right. I know everybody says, you know, let it warm up, do that. I just, it's almost out the door. But when you come commercial grade, um, whether you go gas, diesel engine, everything is greasable. Um, I, j I just know that I've never had an issue with a Caterpillar dozer. But if I went and bought a one of those little mini ones that you buy at Home Depot, it's not going to last me. That that's what I see. You know, working on equipment. Will it, Mr. Kiko, will it make their life a lot easier? Because that's that's a hard job to do to begin with. <clears throat> right now we have a so it's a backhoe operator and typically one or two dump truck drivers. So right now I have three people operating the equipment. You know, while they're doing it, where this I'd probably take two, and they're they're all together. I don't have three. Uh, a dump of uh, random. Yeah, a piece of equipment and two dump trucks. I'd have one dump truck and one piece of equipment. So it would, say would be typical. And this is once a month? Once a month. And in our regulations, it's what two people can chip for 15 minutes. Which you can chip pretty good if you got a good crew going. Say that again? Um, two people chipping for 15 minutes. That's What's, about the max. What, what is that? that? So if we pulled up to your house and you had brush out there, we'll go for 15 minutes. If there is still brush left, you've exceeded your limit. I got you, okay, yeah. okay. So they come back I was trying to figure out if there's so like some their ergonomic <laughs> thing or some like. Oh, now, right. we, we have done, we've went a little longer because we, we help out, you know, we're not leaving at minute 15. Yeah. You know, we're, we're getting it cleaned up. Well, I'm just kind of wondering, I mean, I agree 100%. It, if we buy one, it's got to be a big commercial grade. And the bigger the machine you can buy, the quicker it's going to chip it, and the more material you're going to get through mm -hmm. it, and the more it's going to hold up. But um, I'm still wondering if we're doing this once a month, you could rent a big chipper once a month and not have that much cost and not have any maintenance. Yeah, we don't. You're right in that part. Um, we would have to go pick it up. So once yeah, a month, we we're that. yeah we're driving to one of the places, coming back, and and I would think if you you know if you told them hey we're going to plan on this the first Monday of every month, <coughs> That's have the way reserve a chipper for this twelve inch chipper <laughs> for me you know the first Monday of every month or whatever whoever it yeah, is we, you work we, with we set it for uh, you call in the first week and we pick it up the second week because you just don't know what's going sure. on in that you try to schedule it, but yeah. Um, I will look into the daily I mean, and see if there's something on top of this to that's the part is just that monthly we do we do a lot of brush pickup more than what I was I thought but I mean I think you said it was a thousand dollars a week to rent it for a week mm -hmm. so that if we were rented it one week I think we do month. it for nine months April so, through November so we got <laughs> so you got nine about nine thousand dollars a year for a whole week rental yeah. But we only need it one day. But if you only need it for well, or two yeah. days. Even. If, it, if it worked out that we did brush, we would try to maybe do something else in that week. Sure. Yeah, go to yeah. one of the brush piles and chip some other stuff. Yeah. Or so go to the cemetery and clean something up. Or Yeah. I, me personally, I'm just a big fan of renting things like this just because of the maintenance and the 
um, <laughs> some of the overhead and and it's going to sit yeah. you know a lot too mm -hmm. in the off season and stuff so yeah let me look and into you that. can usually rent a better machine than what you can afford to buy <clears throat> I, I do agree with Ben because in the future as our town grows I would like to see us buy one in the future but I want to see us get a really nice one that we don't have to replace because I believe in buying quality and not having to replace it because ultimately you save tons of money in the long run mm -hmm. I just think it's more wise for our finances right now to just rent it once a month for a week Well, I will go with that. I'll get with my superintendent and uh, see if we can get that scheduled. I mean, I don't have any issue with that. I mean, it, it's there. You know, eventually, like you said, if we if we grow to some point, you know, we either a see what we would have paid for purchasing it, or we're, it's still in the uh, long run better for us to keep running it. But yeah, we do need to use <coughs> one. I mean, I mean, I'd love to have one at disposal to use whenever we want, but. You know, and, and I, it's nothing against scheduling. It's, um, I know how even, how I like to keep some strict schedules with stuff out there in the developments. It just never works. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will follow up with that part. So. Do, do you need uh, a motion on that or not, Allie? Well, it's in the it's in the approved CIP. Okay. So we can go through and approve the budget. And then, um, how, how do you want to? I mean for the rental, not the purchase. No, no. The rental would just be us um, possibly moving those funds into maintenance of uh, infrastructure. <coughs> we would just move them. We would have to amend the CIP, right? Because it's already in the CIP? It's been introduced in it, yeah. Um, so we'll have to amend the CIP to get it out. But we could, in the budget, um, put some money in um, shared streets, shared parks. Um, just to get us started until we can amend the CIP to get that out of there. So it might get approved through through the first and then we'll just have to amend it because we won't be able to do the CIP beforehand or it'll mess up <coughs> numbers. Uh, so I don't the, get upset if we messed up those numbers. <laughs> um, Let's see. Um, so with that being said, uh, we are still looking at possibly that other seasonal helping out with the streets when we get into stuff like that. Um, it's going to be a small, you know, like, it, I think he's shared a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be shared because he does some minor abatements, shared with parks, shared with streets. So when I was walking today, I did notice it. What not downtown's not dirty, but I never saw a straw or a soda cap or something like that laying out because he'd always pick that stuff up so we don't have that right now but we'll definitely be looking at that um let me make sure my so the last thing before i get to rates on the water oh you guys had asked about uh code enforcement um having a possible second one so i talked to brian today and have him give me a few uh bullet points on why we were looking to get a second one. Um, so last year when Brian was doing code enforcement, he was full-time code enforcement. And he was averaging 12 to 15 cases per day. And while he was doing that, he was building relationships with residents and businesses that were in violation. So he told me what Dylan is doing right now is we don't go out, not talk to you, slap a paper on your door or mail it to you and not say a word. I guess what has really been working is with the abatements is having that communication. Um, I have not been getting the calls nor I, I don't think Randy has, we'll get the occasional uh, person who is very, very upset because um, we're picking on them, but typically that hasn't been the case. Um, so with Dylan doing this part-time, he's about four to six cases per day. So from 12 to 15 to four to six. So where if he goes, do the, he goes and completes those cases, then it has to come up to Brian for abatement, for him to follow up with the abatement paperwork and then mayor's court. So Brian does the mayor's court um, when he's summoned for that. So the pictures and everything, just like a police officer has to, they have to be summoned into that court for um, their information. Um, so trying to keep people compliant, and we were discussing code enforcement compared to code compliance, getting people into compliance, whether it's the grass. Hey, you got tall grass, you can't mow it now, we have two free mowers. 
down at the tool lending center. So that's been huge with that. But he can't get out there and catch it. And again, we talked yesterday, we've been in a drought. So this was a not typical of um, how busy <coughs> Dylan probably would have been and we would have needed help. But on a typical year, we got enough grass for two people. One full timer and then, you know, one other. So, um, and then he's, as we look for the future of having rental registration inspections, compliance, um, you know, additional code. I don't think that the new developments will have some of those issues. Um, typically, HOAs kind of monitor that stuff. Um, currently, the code enforcement officer um, spends a lot of time on the phone and responding to emails. So if he didn't get a chance to talk to him, he'll shoot over an email because all his contact information is on there. So he'll be doing all that and nobody's out in the town um, monitoring or going out and checking these other places. And then um, we were talking about the vehicle. Our planning director currently right now uses his POV. Does he get um, reimbursement for fuel? He does. He gets his 58, 62 cents, whatever it is. But as anybody knows, um, that is nowhere near what it costs to um, maintain your POV using it for work purposes. Um, I know if I had to use my POV for work purposes, it definitely would not cover what I, you know, cost of repairs. So I know we had 30. 34,000 um, that was a you know possibly a brand new truck is there something that we could look at you know for a second vehicle you know if, if anything we have a planning director that needs one and can do mixed use with a, a, a possible second part-timer or a seasonal person because we're looking at seasonal um, our code for code person does not receive any benefits but but sick, so he doesn't get you know vacation. He doesn't get the health benefits, nothing like that. Um, so, having that second vehicle would be good, not just because it would be a second person working, but also helps um, with that. And we don't have a, a runaround vehicle for anybody up in staff. You know, everybody has to use their POVs to go to the bank or that stuff. So you do get paid, you do get reimbursed, I believe, but. Nothing covers if you get in an accident, you know, to cover that. Um, Question. Yes. On the second vehicle you talked about, does, would it have to be a pickup truck or could it be a, a, some type of a sedan or a car? Or? It, uh, sometimes our officers, like my street guys, will pick up signs and pick up trash. So a lot of times if it's, <laughs> say, an S10 Ranger size, you've got enough bed backer to put that trash in the bed and not throw it and put your hatch up and throw that trash. Um, inside there. Well, there's times we pick up bags of trash along the road. It doesn't belong to any one house, but we're picking that stuff up. So it was just not putting it in with you. So it could be a small, it could be like you said, an S10 or, or a Ford Ranger or something. Mm -hmm. We just had today, we're going to wastewater tomorrow because they have in their current budget to buy some vehicles. So for 2024. So we're down there trying to take one of them out and actually be able to get two vehicles because we have sludge hauling and so he's bringing down a quad cab, cab, 1500 Ram, old school metal wheels, gray, you know, basic, uh, 37,000, brand new, 2024, out the door. With a and it has a V8 in it. So, but for 37,000, you or I, you know, that we're not touching that, that vehicle. So that's just showing you what a full size quad cab truck with a V8 costs, brand new, 37. So we were looking for something obviously smaller. Would it have to be a, a quad cab? No, no, no. I think our current one is a regular cab. But it ju I was just for okay. explaining what the cost was. Well, they're expensive. I've been out looking. And that is, you know, he gave me that information. Um, you know, the vehicle I think would really like to push, but if 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 32. Excuse me, 32 hours is too much. We maybe look try to hire a seasonal, and of course, it was a struggle to hire our person we got now. You know, um, he's got other. I, there's other commitments. You know, to rather than try and say, hey, we want to make you full time. Um, it's just it's probably not there. So, but we I think we need about another 20 hours a week of going out there, keeping the paperwork straight you know, doing the mayor's court. I know when they get mayor's court, sometimes they get extensions, um, but I believe our code guy now already communicates with people pretty well. 
and we just need a second person to keep up <coughs> with that stuff and and we're not trying to hammer on every little thing but there's a lot of things out there where a neighbor complains and they're like why didn't you do nothing we're, we're just trying we, we got these last two three he's got to go do paperwork etc cetera, etc cetera. would this uh, part-time person or seasonal person be working uh, Saturdays I haven't really give it a thought that deep but typically it's just during a work day um, if you're probably thinking about vehicles parked in the yard we typically see that already during the work day not just Saturday right yeah but we know that's out there um, I there's a few that were on dead ends that we had them straighten their vehicle around and turn <laughs> it the other way even though nobody's driving by them you know we're out there still trying to pick up some of these little things that doesn't cost them any money all, all they got to do is flip a vehicle around or just get it out of their yard about as bad as the garbage uh, toters on the street on Thursday and Friday. Or Saturdays. Yeah, or Saturdays. Tuesday. And then the, um, so then the last thing we had discussed is uh, possibly looking at a holdover for water uh, to try and make sure we have an ending fund balance that is kind of comfortable. So I did a, a couple possible rates. Um, as we know, the loan payment July of 2026 is the last loan payment of 106,000. There's two a year, so or 108,000. There's two a year. It's 216,000 total. Um, so in 2027 is the first year off. So I was looking at you know possibly say we did a five percent um, rate increase. Uh, our revenue is at about a million dollars, so that would estimate it to bring in 50,000. And if you divide that on average over there, we have about 2,200 water accounts. Um, that would be $22 a year per account. So if you did a 5% and my, now a senior person that only uses 1,000 gallons, they're not gonna see that, but the person who uses uh, 100 million gallons a, you know, a month, they're gonna see a little bit more. But on the average, um, it's gonna be about $22 a year. In other words, about $2 a month. Yeah, $2 a month. The other one that was a little bit less is a 3%, and I was doing a 5% and a 3%, and then this was a 3 and 3. It'd bring in 30,000. Um, over 2,200 counts, it's about $13 a year. You might as well do the 5, because you're not going to have any more upheaval over the 5 than you will the 3. And then the big thing is to re definitely reevaluate when we do budget discussions in 2026. For 2027 so reevaluate um, the water again next year or? no in 2026 uh, evaluate because the loan payment will be off so we'll be making some budget adjustments at that time because now the $216,000 loan payment mm -hmm. will now no longer be an expense so we'll still be getting the revenue and we won't have that expense now with that being said some of that will be going into reserves because we know we're going to be working on stuff. I mean, the plant's still in great condition, but still things we got to fix. So I can't say that that 216,000 is free and clear for the next 10 years each year. So some of it will get ate up. But the water plant's not at capacity, even with the two new developments coming, correct? Right, it is not at capacity. What capacity will it wind up at? About 85, I find, 85 percent, I believe. I remember. Um, I think it's just under 80. I think it's just under. No, let me think. We're at uh, 500 thousand now, with um, 2,200 accounts. We're adding 700. It's a third. So um, we're going to be. I think 650 thousand to. Um, it's a 1.2 million gallon plant, and I haven't looked at those numbers since the day we brought those plans through um, for the building of the development. So we had to send to the EPA. But it, I'm pretty sure it's somewhere between 80 and 85 percent capacity once those builds are complete. Yeah, once they're complete in that eight to ten year time. Right. Period. That's. I'm, I'm going to say ten years down the road mm -hmm. before they're, that both of them are complete, or maybe a little longer. It just depends on the economy. And what about the sewer charges? Are we looking at any kind of rate there? Uh, not right now. We're not looking at one. I think their last one just ended. Just ended last year. Just ended last year. 
and so they're doing good. The, the thing about sewer is we have, um, you know, Northampton that comes in, and there's not much cost to what they bring in unless, you know, it's raining. So with the drought, it's helped us out because we haven't had to treat storm water. And when I say storm water, I'm talking infiltration, not, you know, drainage stuff that comes into our pipes. But, you know, they're, they're doing good with their rates right now. I think their ending fund balance is just under a million dollars. So my goal is they'll reach their capacity before water does. So when these developments get going in, you know, five to seven years from now, when it's time to build a plant, we should have a good ending fund balance um, to put some money down, apply for the, the grants that I typically would go for and not have as much of a payment. All right, let me Where's ask Where's that this. plant going? Hmm? Talking about that comprehensive plan. Can you envision us going north and picking up those condos up there or just past the golf course? I don't see it if the city doesn't have the funds to go after it. Um, typically, if you're going up for the condominiums by the golf course, and even if you want to get to the mobile home parks, um, it is three miles to get there, and you average uh, water goes in for about, well, I just got bids for water. Now, granted, there's some things around in, in the way, so let's take it down to about 100 to $120 a foot for water. And you take that times 15000 you're in millions to install. So OPWC, I can usually get 50%. OPWC doesn't even have a millions. So I'm probably looking at two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000. So even if I try to put a little bit in, it's what can they do? Unless the EPA comes along and says, they have bad water we're willing to pay to get them some utilities extended i think that's coming down the road and it's possible but yeah um we've talked to the two reps because they asked us to go to the marathon at 40 and go further and they're like well clark county's closer so they ended up helping clark county get down there we were farther away to cost them more money but the mobile home parks like i said three miles away pretty darn expensive and you know they're going to be footing a lot of the bill Yeah, I'm just going to ask where that mm -hmm. new water sewer plant's going. Uh, right, right exactly where it is now. Okay, so you're just tearing down one and putting another or just um, adding another? It's it's partial. Some of the facilities will stay and be retrofitted into a new type of... So how we treat now completely goes away. It'll be a new style um, because we would be uh, treating so much more. Well, not so much more, but more. Um, so they retrofit some of our concrete structures. And then where there's a big vacant grassy area by our plant, that's where the new part of the plant would go. So we would have some new stuff. And when I say old, not old equipment, but old structures that would be concrete that they would reuse. Um, but it's it's still right down there. Okay. I was wondering. So, and that's actually what you got. Oh, I'm sorry. What you just got the um, engineer report on, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you get a price with that, just for curiosity? Um, I think it was about five to six million. Okay. And that can change on different technologies as we go, but you know. Just curious for a heads up. Yep. So on the five on the five percent water increase, how quick are you looking to do that? We would do it for the first of the year to start around the first. It takes a minute when you do when you pass the ordinance because we are in the rears with water bills. So you have to put a date ahead. So it would I'm gonna guess it'd probably be February. And probably the middle of the month when we do our reads. So yeah. It'll be a full bill instead of a so, official. So, are you looking for a motion for that tonight or no, in no, the future? Uh, no. What I would do is bring an ordinance. Um, if I get a feeling that a five three for the next two years, I'll draft an ordinance with those regulations, or in those fee that fee schedule and dates, and then it'll be up to council to um, pass or fail at that time. And then, and then we would adjust. Obviously, the budget passes as is. Let's say with one hundred fifty thousand, and and you say we we do the rate increase then we would do a estimated revenue adjustment for water to show those revenues. So, you, so you're, going, you're looking at a 5% increase in water? A 5% a in year one and a 3% in year two and reevaluate the next year when the loan comes off. And? Uh, that's an 8% increase. That's eight. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I thought it was one or the other. No, I, I had a five and three and a three and three. Mm -hmm. What the one would bring in um, the three and three would bring in about sixty thousand nine hundred, and it would cost you about total over the two years about twenty six dollars per house per year, 
and then the other one would be eighty one thousand five hundred, and that would bring in about it. Uh, I'm sorry, it would bring in eighty one thousand five hundred, and it would cost about forty four dollars per year per house on average. But you know, seniors that don't use it, they're not going to see that forty four. People who use more water, they'll see that forty four a little bit more. That's the average. I can bring, um, you know, if it's council's uh, kind of unsure which direction, I can bring both ordinances with both plans, and then. Uh, well, I would like to know what council thinks about the three percent back to back, or uh, three five percent with a three percent on top of it the next year. I think that's a little quick myself. Uh, uh, there was maybe a couple of years in between there to let the let them settle on their on the bills the uh, because you're talking like uh, on the one it's like forty four forty five dollars a year increase that that's a lot of money for uh, the first for year some people yeah the first year on average so if you take the average user of, of the city uh, the first year would be twenty-two dollars, and then when the next increase comes on, it'd be another twenty, a uh, little less than twenty-two, because it'd be a three, so it'd be, it'd be about thirty-five total over two years. So, so what's the average water usage in, in the city? I guess is my next question. Is yeah, it three to five thousand gallons a month, or is it higher? Uh, it's about five thousand gallons. So that is the that's average. That's the average, and that would cost the average user at five thousand gallons a year or a month. Uh, an extra twenty-two hundred dollars or twenty-two dollars a year, correct? Is that what I'm? So yeah. So the average would be um, if you if you did a five and a three, the average user, which which is about five to six thousand gallons a, a month, is going to be um, thirty-five dollars a year, or take thirty-five divided by twelve, and that's going to be about what it is per month. Okay. So three bucks a month. Yeah, about about three bucks okay. a month on the average water bill. Then. I guess my question to council, are you good with a 5% first and then a 3% on its back the next year? Or do you want a year in between there? Or do you just want the flat 5% and be done with it? In my estimation, we're going to get so much flack over whatever the increase is going to be. I'd much rather get them once and get it done. So you, That's my thought. So you think a 5% and, and, I, and forget the 3% the on top of it? Is that what you're saying, uh, Mr. No, Mayor? I'm saying the strictly, as I understood it, you were talking about 5% total. Um, I was doing two years. One was a 3 and a 3 or a 5 and a 3. Two so years total. Be 8% in, total. No, I did 3 and 3. That, that, if we're going up 6%. But I would, I'm like you, I'd rather see a couple of years between them. Right. The big so, thing with the couple of years in between, I apologize, um, is that third year, so year one, year two, year three does not have the loan payment. Yeah. That's where the uh, re a good review of the water fund is going to be that year when that loan payment is not being paid. And that would be in the fall of 26 for budget year 27. But historically in cities <clears throat> or any business, once you raise a fee to a level, and then in our case, in year number three, we're going to have, hypothetically, 216 grand extra plus whatever is generated. So that could probably be, I'm, I'm just going to say, uh, $225,000 in the fund on year three. That's not going to be dropping off any to to help the citizens out because you said you could readjust are you talking about adjusting up in year three or no it would be reevaluating the fund to go okay here's what we got in three years from now things can change these buildings could be coming in and we have tap fees in there for those capital mm -hmm. uh, purchases and we go okay um, and that is typical what has changed in the plant in three years what have we had to do in maintenance? And we have to say, okay, we need to get this ending fund balance up to 600000 where we're comfortable, 800000 And we go, okay, this might take three years before we do a reduction. 
we may not do a, 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 any kind of increases, but we're not going to do a reduction and let that spending fund balance build back up if there are no catastrophic issues or anything like that. If I was to say I was going to drop it in year three because the loan dropped off, then I'm still down here at about this 150, which is about four or five pumps, you know, going out, yeah. and that's gone. So I need to get that minimum. They tell you a minimum and one annual um, amount in reserves. So it's a million dollar budget right now. You should have about a million dollars in reserves. Well, we don't. So what's the next best thing? Trying to get 50% of it. So trying to get 500,000 where that would be right now, and and not losing. Would the three and three get you to the point where you want to be, or, or do we really need the five and three? Which I don't know if council's on board with a five and three. The three and three sounds more enticing to me, but sure, the three and three gets us obviously with no break, any breakdowns outside of what we're scheduled. We know we got scheduled or any minor stuff uh, would bring in about sixty, so it would put us at about two ten, ending fund balance right now. Next year. Next, and by the end of next year, we would project two ten. Okay. And the five and three would end up being what, like two thirty. Uh, two so eighty at eighty two thousand so about two thirty two forty. Is it that much difference between the three and three and five and three? Uh, I don't know. It's it's in a it's a percentage that typically when we've done rates before and I've done this since day one in in two thousand and one or two thousand and five is go we need a three percent every year, not these fifteen percent and then don't do anything for four years. And then a 20% don't do anything for four. I've already, I, it was a long time ago, I did the math that if we would have done a 3% since 2005 and never done any other standard rate increase, we'd have had more money in this fund than we would have doing these 10s and 15s and 20 rate increases every four years or so. so but it just didn't want to cut, they just didn't want to, the council at that point in time didn't want to pass it. If you didn't get a 3% cost of living raise on your check, then we didn't get a 3% in the water fund. Go ahead, Carrie Ann. Um, I know that we're all looking at the big picture here and that I understand what's going on with the water department. And I hear you about the senior citizens, but with all of our other utilities going up, mm -hmm. our young families are struggling mm -hmm. a lot. I, I keep hearing it talking to my constituents that are around my age with young ones and our poverty rate is climbing in our city because of this. So I really want us to consider this as well and put that out on the table as a concern for our citizens. Like I said, I totally understand mm -hmm. where you are coming from and I know that this is imperative and it needs to happen, I understand, but we do need to consider everybody who lives here as well mm -hmm. so i feel the three and three would be much more gentle um for our constituents especially with young children because we have more and more people not able to afford food on their table and they're they don't qualify for food stamps always and it's just getting really hard out there so i just want to put that out there for us to consider them as well mm -hmm. Go ahead, Bill. I agree with Councilman Grow. Sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> You're not the only one. I know. You're not. <laughs> uh, but if we're gonna, if we need to get this phone up, and it for future planning, <coughs> if I'm hearing you correctly, another two percent and do the five and three isn't going to make that big of a difference because you're only talking three four dollars a month if you're using five thousand gallons of water uh, i think just from my own experience if you have three people you're probably looking at three thousand gallons unless that third person's like a two-year-old and you got to do laundry every two hours to keep them in clothes uh, you know, almost everything nowadays is water saving, water conserving, and, and appliances, your faucets, your 
whatever spigot you're turning on, nine times out of ten, probably has a water conserving spigot on it. So I think, I don't think that 2% is going to make that big of a difference. But I'd like to hear from the rest of council on which one they think would be better to get a consensus. And while, while you're thinking about that, Mr. Kiko, uh, you didn't mention anything about water softening. I thought that was a question we asked last night. Yeah, we're, <laughs> well, no, we did. We talked about water softening a little bit last night. And, uh, you know, we're, we're sitting at about the average, you know, of where you might get a little bit, a little bit, of, someone brought up lime, you know, just, there's not lime removal for us. Sometimes uh, you get it because we're in a lime, um, uh, sand and gravel aquifer, and we might pick up a little bit. But, you know, if you're getting calcium and um, uh, buildup or a little bit of lime buildup, um, I mean, I don't get any because we have zero at my house, but we, uh, if you don't have zero, you're going to get some. So it comes, how often do you take care of your aerator? How often do you clean the faucets where it's splashed to? You know, that's the, that's the, the big thing with it. You're always going to have some sort of white residue on every faucet within a municipality. Now at home, unless you forget to fill your softener with salt, that's the only time you're going to get it, and then you might get an iron ring. But if you're if you're zero, you're you very rarely get that. But if you're in a municipality, doesn't matter what municipality, even the lowest one, pumping it out at 120 milligrams per liter, you're still going to get white residue. You still will. I agree with the three and three. I got a three and three, Mr. Bond. I'm a five and three person. Five and three. Three and three, girl. Three and three. <laughs> Kathy? I, I just, I'm sorry. But I hate it when the cable bill goes up three and a half dollars and then you turn around and it goes up another three and a half dollars. I'm just like, do seven and be done. That's me, so. Deuce. It's not that much. Six is three dollars and 42 cents. Eight is four dollars and 56 cents. Uh, you know, I'm not going to notice a dollar difference. I'm going to complain either way. So, and I think it's going to be like everybody else, you know. Well, give me so, give me a three and three or a five and three. I don't like those. Seven, I said, said just go seven. seven start across. now and do it. I'll yeah. do a one year. Just do, no, just go seven up no, and leave seven it there. And leave it there until and see what it see where we and wind up. Our new people will be in, and we can reevaluate in a couple of years. Okay. I just, it drives me crazy when it's like, dang, what it only 84 cents this? Why is it $3.32? You know, it's like, that drives me crazy. Vice Mayor, where do you stand? Oh, three and three. I think you're at three and three, Bill, or five and three. I don't know, since Kathy kicked out that seven, that sounds pretty i mean she's muddy the water exactly right she did but <laughs> if the two choices is three and three and five and three i, I think the five and three would work but if we did a flat seven as councilman right councilwoman right suggested and just leave it there that way we only have one rate increase and then look at it in two or three years mm -hmm. Because hopefully we have more, we have some housing coming on in three years, and uh, and we don't have to mess with it, possibly. Right. With I mean, in we're, your mind, we're would hoping that work. We're hope the higher you pump, you get to an efficiency of eighty percent. That is your highest return on investment. Um, obviously, our return on investment is we built a plant oversized for the city back in two thousand and six. So. Now we're hoping that the return on investment when these homes come in and the loan goes off, you'll start seeing a reverse course and see that. So that is my goal as well. But obviously we evaluate it every year and see what the future holds. What's that 7% going to give us per month on the average? Uh, 70, it will, let's see, 70,000 divided by... That's eight. That's right. Yeah. Give math thing out more here. My yeah. math brain is up. fried for the day. Yeah. But that's a lot with electricity going up again. Um, $31 for the year ish on average. Some will be less, some could be more. But that's the average. 
So we're right about the three dollars a month. About three dollars a month. At seven percent. At seven percent. One year. That's one year. Nothing in twenty twenty six. You're good. I'm good. Mr. Bond. Sure. Not a fan. <laughs> Kathy's good for seven. Bill's good, good for, for seven. seven. Where are you at? I'm good. Do it seven. I will draft an ordinance accordingly. Uh, it would stay at seven answer. until yeah. we change it again, correct? So we'll right. see how okay. things are going. It'll be a seven and no alter, no years after that. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, that, I think that would work out better for the citizens in the long run and still attempt to comp accomplish what we what all up here have to do, you know. Sometimes the choices we make aren't the, aren't, uh, the choices we want to make, but we have a city we have to run. And if we could get that water help along with the, you know, ordinance help, that would be great. Because some people are going to need it, seriously. Does council people, have anything else you want to bring up? Oh, did that, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, was that a double on there, that 20000 A double on the 20000 for the planning? Was it, a, it was the employee? The employee or the whatever. Yeah. I think when we looked at it, we had... Um, yesterday you had thought that maybe you had put it yeah. in there twice. We have um, mm -hmm. a seasonal mower now in the street department and... An ad season? We had... Uh, Enforcement it too, so no, it wasn't. Okay. But I do have, before we finish, a little re revision on the general fund that um, Councilman Vaughn asked for. And I'll wait until any other questions are done. Okay. How have you got anything else? Uh, I've completed, I think I've gotten everything, other things I couldn't get <coughs> ready for tonight, but I, I'm done. Uh, okay. We had. I'm going to bring up something. Um, Some time back, we passed an ordinance where the law director was hired and fired with by the city manager with the council's approval. Mm -hmm. I personally would like to see an ordinance put forth where the law director is hired by council and I don't know where the rest of you think about that but that's something I want to see come down go ahead Bill one question I would have on that uh, and he, he isn't here to address it maybe Mr. Kitko knows it Mrs. Harris may know it is that in our charter that the that's under that that's his Thing to hire I fire with our consent I think there I think it's a charter thing because it's a charter thing for us as well on some on his uh, upper management and law director so I'd have to go into there I believe there's something to that effect. Well, I, I know for, for the manager you to fire miss Harris sorry mrs. Harris you have to come to us and we have to approve that you can't just arbitrarily say you're gone council has to approve that i think there's uh if not the word consult what there's a word can confer uh yeah it's notify in, it's in the charter on that it I think is it's in the charter <coughs> so we would have to make a charter change amendment. in the charter Tra change the charter okay. when we get to that point <coughs> I have a quick question that has nothing to do with that and I'm sorry if I'm sorry I don't know the answer how uh, this these meetings were to adjust the budget is there an adjustment we can make to make sure that the firefighters get a raise we are, man. Th that's in the budget that is yeah. in the budget oh. it's in the budget and when the time comes I, think I we, misunderstood that uh, it is in the budget when the time comes it'll be in, they have to get it through ordinance so you'll have an ordinance before council at some point to give that. Okay. Yeah. I thought we were well, just referring back to the worksheet that you had given us, and I didn't realize that that was actually written in the budget. It's just it's uh, included, included in my in my oh, okay. totals. Yeah. To will that or sorry? Will that ordinance be before us before the first of the year, so it goes into effect the first of the year? 
Is that how they normally? Um, I think as soon as we can put it together, it'll it'll be effective. Effective then 15 days after we vote on it? Yeah, it'll be effective, but then we'll probably put a, an effective date for, January and let's say 1. you pass it uh, the second <coughs> first meeting of December, it'll be effective January 1, or the first payroll. First full pay period of the year. Yeah, the first full okay. payroll of the year. So, so there's no retro and there's no old rate, new rate, trying to put it all in. That way, then doing a percentage. Um, right now, it's uh, set at a dollar an hour across the board. What what would that raise the? That will raise our, uh, what we call our partner only. Mm -hmm. That will raise them to fourteen dollars an hour. We'll raise the MPs to seventeen dollars an hour. Uh, intermediates to eighteen dollars an hour. Paramedics to nineteen dollars an hour. Is that still is that high enough to retain them? Because other departments are paying more, I believe. Or is that going to put us closer to comparability? Closer, but we also have to look at what, what my budget can withstand. Mm -hmm. Well, our, our manager over there can, uh, you know, wave his magic wand and convince the lady next to him down that way to, you know, take some money out of the generation she's looking around for, her, take some money out and, and put it in your budget. <laughs> Out of the general fund. Well, when you win the lottery, you can donate. Mm -hmm. Believe me, if I won the lottery, they'd be paid a whole lot more than they're getting paid, and I would do it so the city didn't have any control that's, over that's it. Really if there's nothing else, do I have a motion for adjournment? I have one. Minute, I have still. more, too. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so, Council. You go ahead. No, I'm, I wanted to finish. Oh, okay. Um, you said we had like a $225 overage. Can we earmark some of that to our parks? I would like to do 10,000 to Smith, 10,000 to Willowick, 10,000 to um, the whatever. What's the name of it? Carlisle Park. And then I'd also like to put aside 10,000 for the arts committee that's starting up so we can get some stuff going for our citizens. I, I got confused on with what overage? You, I think you said 225 overage. 200 to 200. Uh, above what we're going to end up above. You talking thousands or hundreds? Thousands. Mm -hmm. You're talking in the general fund. In the general fund. So that's where we're at right now. Right. Yes. Our original um, estimation from what we work on when we have our uh, when we work on the budget. And um, Councilman Vaughn had asked about trying to get that general fund to a $2 million ending. So, get my sheet kind of right here. So this is what we talked about yesterday, that the general fund was going to be at $1.3 million. But we know that we're not spending. So the overage is what I'm talking about mm -hmm. that will carry over. So when I went in and counted all the revenue to date, estimated the next two months, expenditure to date, estimated the next two months, then I feel that it's going to be closer to, my eyes are burning, I'm so sorry, I can't find it right there. So the budget has um, 1.9 in the revenue, and I'm thinking we're going to be a little closer to 2 million. Mm -hmm. And the expenditures for, and this is our current budget, is at 27, 2,795,000. And it's looking at about 2.2 million, so that's going to bring this ending balance adjusted to 2.6, 2 million 694. I carry that over to help us in next year's budget. With what we have anticipated in our revenue and our expenses, that would put us at an ending balance of 2 million. That's really as low as the general fund should go. So that really isn't a surplus if you want to retain a healthy balance. If you want to trade some things for something else, you know, more so. But to take out another 200, we're back to 1.8. And that's getting getting kind of low and uncomfortable. Also with um, the history of the general fund, we have been able to always come out in the black. We didn't have any overages. This is still our, what I just, change, you know, got. <coughs> so we did have quite a bit of 
expenditures over and above the budget this year mm -hmm. with different things at 101 and, and um, other items that we brought in. But it's still going to keep that at that minimum, hopefully, for the end of next year at $2 million. I guess I get that and all. I don't know how to say it, but we have been spending lots of money on us, not really us, but the city and infrastructure and things like that, important stuff. But I just want to hear my board and talking about spending the whole thing. I was talking 10 for each one and then maybe an additional 10 for activities in the park, things like that. So like a 40,000 is what I was asking. I'm not asking for the whole whatever. Are you talking about equipment or just 40,000 in the park? Um, really, we do for have this amount right here, I can't that, see it. Okay, sorry, <laughs> we're gonna put you down here with me. No, I'm okay. <laughs> Mr. Bridge was talking about playground equipment. Right, wasn't yes. in, and he originally said something about. So our our uh, Willowick Park playground equipment, we're replacing that. Um, it's gotten to the point where it's getting to be rusty. So part of that fifty thousand is putting an all new playset in Willowick Park. Mm-hmm. So there is some new. We put we put in almost fifty thousand every year in some playground equipment. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, would it be possible then to to maybe put another twenty thousand in there so we could maybe do something in another park also this year or not? Is are there any ideas? Because um, we have I have uh, some match I got to do for Carlisle Park because we're doing uh, some ADA stuff. In there good ideas for that I don't know if you got the message but yeah we you probably did um, the the CDBG grants already been written the only thing we haven't done is uh, specifically when the parking lot goes in um, what type of specific swing gets put in whether it is a wheelchair swing if it's an inclusive swing for not to be in a wheelchair that's the only detail that um, um, I haven't had the engineer pick out yet to mm -hmm. go all right, we can go from the pavilion, go over, how do we make it workable from the parking lot and make whatever it is we put in there? Because um, it's almost minimum is, I think, $20,000 for that piece of equipment. So we, if it's a, a wheelchair swing, I think it was almost twenty grand for a wheelchair to go up in there and then someone pushes yeah, it. Yeah, and we don't need that, so that would be... Uh, well, the, yeah, there's various, but those are some of the things we're looking at. Yeah, that's... So I just want our money to be spent a little more reasonably in certain areas, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't. We have to have some money to play with to do that. And yep. There's not. If you're going to spend fifty thousand in Willowick, then so much for that idea. That's kind of gone, right? There. Yeah, that one's a must because uh, it, we actually had to do a repair on it, mm -hmm. and we uh, called the company to get a new slide, the new um, honeycomb grate that goes in the middle, and all the landings. Mm -hmm. They don't have them. The, the, well, I take that back. They don't have those specifics, but they have a different one. And just the, the main platform where everybody gets up in that playset was like seven grand just for a metal platform. And we're like, she goes, why don't you, if you need to replace all these pieces, we can get you a whole new setup, design, and come install it for less than what you need to do to do the repairs. I'm like, works for me. Let's get a whole new set, change a few things, add a few more activities to it. Um, and, and go with that big slide small slide touch things you know various things compared to what's there now so yeah we have to change that one just because mm -hmm. it's it's right now it's all but closed down okay whatever it's fine Karen. um may councilwoman Wright and i meet with you for some playground ideas that we have that maybe we can implement into willowick park i got a i got some stuff mm -hmm. Uh, on the, I don't know what you call it, retreat thing that it, we went to last week. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the same ideas that we had had. It, would it be okay if we met with you, like we met with Randy? And I can also forward you the notes from when we met with Randy. Yeah, sure. About I mean, playground I stuff, just yep. to run some ideas by you. Is, is it, that okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, if Look at a couple things. Um, Play World <coughs> and... I will, I will get the other one, just so you know kind of what the brand is. So if it's mm. something you're specifically looking at from yeah, another brand that you want to implement, we'll yeah. see if they have something that... 
It is. By the it's time a, you come and we meet. It's like a natural kind of playground equipment that gives kids a feeling of like uh, hiking and stuff. It's made with wood, not metal, mm -hmm. things like that, just to look at. I'm not saying for you to say yes, just, <laughs> just some ideas that we had. Yes, yeah, for both of you? Yeah. Okay. So are we increasing playground? I was, I, I was just going to ask council <clears throat> what their thoughts on in increasing the playground equipment another 20000 uh, to maybe do a little bit more this year, along with the grants that, that Mr. Kitko gets too, because we have to, there's some matching there. So mm -hmm. if I'm correct. He, I do have to, some of that's Willowick, and then some of it is um, partial match. Well. Uh, match for the phase two that's phase one is there but there's going to be a little bit of a match for the phase two okay so what does council think about putting another 20,000 or even 10,000 uh, in that fund I don't think that would hurt the bottom line drastically would it ma'am no. and and do a little bit more for our parks and the the wheelchair swing I I don't think we need one of those because I from things I hear they want to get out of the chair and act like a normal kid and the parents <laughs> would want that for them also and I don't know how many children we have in the city uh, that are wheelchair bound uh, I see some older people but I don't see uh, any of the any kids so what's what does council think about putting another ten or twenty thousand in there? I'll I'll agree with ten. I'll agree with ten. Can we hold off hiring that other part time person and the other vehicle and take that money and use some of that that way and then leave the other in the general fund? Can we shuffle that? Sounds like a good trade to What's me. What's your thoughts on that, Mr. Kirko? At least for a year. I mean, me, uh, we, we've been without those two items for how long now? Yeah. Uh, another year probably wouldn't hurt. I mean, we need we need your input on this, I think. I know you want a car on another Friday. <laughs> Let me get with Colleen just to make sure how everything would work if we did add some there and be able to work work them both a little bit and still keep our minimum fund balance up near that two million plus. I just want to add like if we do an, like a little arts festival kind of thing down in Smith Park, then the vendors like the artists would pay us for tables and stuff rent and for their space and that mm -hmm. could go towards the park fund that's just an idea that's an idea that I've had running <coughs> I don't know how you feel about that or how anybody feels about that but it's just an idea <laughs> try to give back to the city somehow and add more things for our teenagers to do that's a complaint I've been hearing from my constituents we don't have enough for our teenagers to do and so I'd like to give them something and I think that if we had like a little arts festival obviously nothing as big as the Heritage of Flight Festival dear Lord I they do such a good job but I could never <laughs> um, but yeah I just to add to the parks fund to add to whatever and we can do free events for the kids in the parks you know just the families so if if the numbers work, is council good with adding a ten, another ten thousand dollars to that fund? Why don't, why don't we let Howie and, and Mrs. Harris get together and see what we can do uh, at that point? We don't have an issue with adding ten. It's how much do we keep going? You know, <clears throat> let me follow up on my uh, CDBG grant application and just see what I have for my match just to make sure that I got it or it's you know in here and um, still look at if her numbers are still going to be up there we're still getting it we're still adding playground stuff we're still able to keep things clean I'd like to get all of it you know I 
think it's a, still one yep. or two mil. That's that's a comfort. Had a little wiggle room. Right. Totally off subject. Are we still having a meeting tomorrow night as well? On, I guess I wouldn't say anything. Uh, we don't have any other budget stuff for tomorrow night. <coughs> as long as no, councils. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, we're not Sweet. on for tomorrow yeah. night. I'll give the clerk a night off. <laughs> Her hands. I'll dock your pay. Her hands like <laughs> ramping up. Are we ready to go? If nothing else, Mr. Mayor, I move to adjourn. Day. Councilman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lee? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grove? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Chan? Yes.